and at last our dream home is complete and we'll be moving in a week. In the midst of it all, my husband dropped a bombshell. Seems like Mom and the others have started packing up too. What? Is your mom moving too? Huh? <laughs> what are you talking about? Of course they are moving to the new house. Wait, by new house, do you mean your mom bought a house too? Are you out of it? The new house is the one we bought. Wait, what do you mean? My name is Maria, a 34-year-old corporate employee. I've always been dedicated to my work, prioritizing it over romance. This focus allowed me to be promoted at an early age, be entrusted with various tasks, and often land in positions with responsibility. I work for a pharmaceutical company, where my role is to visit healthcare professionals, such as doctors, to provide, collect, and convey information about the quality, effectiveness, and safety of our products. I am busy traveling to various hospitals daily and preparing presentations on new drugs for doctors, even when I return to the office. My workaholic tendencies are such that my parents have often suggested, if you can't find a good man, why not go on blind dates? To which I always retort, I don't have time for that. Going on blind dates willy-nilly? I don't want to be so indiscriminate. However, I've started to wonder if I should continue my life as a single woman. My friends are getting married one by one, and my close friend, who used to say, let's enjoy our single life and travel a lot, is now a mother of two. Although I still believe that marriage isn't everything in life, I'm starting to feel a sense of urgency about whether I should end my life without experiencing marriage. That's when I met Robert, who later became my husband. A friend, hearing about my concern, introduced me to him at a party she hosted. Robert, five years younger than me, was 29, apparently works as a web designer. Like me, he had prioritized his work and often ended up being dumped because he wasn't good at balancing work and love. I thought, he's just like me, and felt a strange kinship with him. We hit it off right away and began dating. He understood our work commitments, so we only met when our schedules allowed, which made the relationship very comfortable. He seemed very dedicated to his work and gave me a very serious impression, which made me think that I could marry him. His parents had also suggested to him that it's about time you should think about marriage, and had even brought up the subject of arranged marriages. This similarity in our circumstances made me feel that he was indeed the right person to marry. After about a year of dating, we got married. My parents were thrilled that I was getting married, and my mom even burst into tears. I believe she was genuinely happy because she cried so much, not just when we announced our marriage, but also during our wedding ceremony. This is how the married life of my husband and I started, but we immediately hit a wall. That was the presence of my in-laws. Since our house was about a ten-minute walk from my in-laws, we often got called over. It was always my mother-in-law who would call us, seemingly with the intention of badgering the daughter-in-law while meeting her son. My mother-in-law frequently made snide remarks toward me to the extent that my husband and father-in-law wouldn't notice, and she would often make me do household chores for no good reason. Maria, I have a backache. Could you do the cleaning for me? Uh, oh, okay. Great. Could you clean all the rooms and corridors on the first and second floor? Uh... Another person who troubled me was my sister-in-law. She had a sharp tongue to begin with and would openly insult me, regardless of whether my husband or father-in-law were around. Maria, you seem like such a plain and boring woman. <laughs> My husband and father-in-law would scold her, but she just ignored them and did whatever she wanted. I want to eat something sweet, Maria. Go and buy it. Oh, perfect timing. Please also buy some ingredients for dinner while you're out. Though I wondered why I had to do these things, I initially thought it was better not to rebel against my in-laws, so I complied quietly. However, this only served to encourage my mother-in-law and sister-in-law. They started to harass me every chance they got. After that, I grew weary of visiting my in-laws and started telling my husband, I don't want to go. My husband said, Well, I won't force you to come, but also expressed his dissatisfaction, saying, They're my family, so please try to get along with them. 
I could have gotten along with them if my mother-in-law and sister-in-law had been kind. Since my husband didn't forcibly take me, I was able to avoid going to my in-laws for a while, but I had to go during Christmas and Thanksgiving because it was hard to decline those invitations after usually refusing them. However, when I showed up at my in-laws, my mother-in-law and sister-in-law treated me as if they'd gotten a new toy to play with. I only have to see them once or twice a year, so I just have to endure this. I would tell myself to get through these visits. If it weren't for the situation with my in-laws, my married life with my husband would have been close to ideal. He knew I loved my job, so he let me do overtime whenever I wanted, and we shared household chores. I was truly grateful that he was understanding about my work. My husband also supported my dream, that is, to build my own home. This has been a dream of mine since I was a child. Well, even though my husband is supportive, I decided to build the house using only money I saved by myself, so there's no financial help from him. So rather than support, it's more like he's understanding of the situation. The funds for my dream house have been mostly saved from part-time jobs since my student days. It's not something to openly brag about, but I have a pretty good salary at my company, so I was able to save a decent amount each month. This is one of the reasons why I was able to prepare enough funds at this age, I think. Finally, the funds for my dream house reached the necessary amount, so I promptly requested a construction company. Floor plan and design and such. I had researched variously since long ago, so I was able to smoothly convey my wishes. So I was thinking of making this your workspace, Robert. Since your web design job is often working from home, I thought you'd find it relaxing if it's a place with good sunlight and a nice outside view. That sounds great. I'm really happy. Thank you. The dream house is quite far from my in-laws, so my mother-in-law and sister-in-law probably won't be able to visit often. Excitedly, I waited for the house to be completed, and finally our dream house was completed and we decided to move in a week later. In the midst of all this, my husband made a surprising remark. My parents have been packing up quite a bit, too. What? Are your parents moving? What? <laughs> of course, they're moving to the new house. Wait, the new house? Did your parents buy a house, too? Are you spacing out? The new house is our house. What? What do you mean? Why are your parents moving into my house? Why? Well, when I talked about the new house, they said they wanted to live there too. What? Why did you decide something like that on your own? I can't believe this. What's the matter? Is that bad? Of course it is. My dream was to build and live in my ideal home. Why do I have to be interrupted by your parents? Interrupted? They're my family. You may not have noticed, but I've been bullied by your mother and sister. I can't live with them. Even after I said this much, my husband did not understand and said something unbelievable. Enough. Stop being so selfish. What? My mom and sis were saying this. They said they were troubled by your bad attitude. They said they just wanted you to be a good wife. You took their side? You believed them? Enough. You really don't listen, do you? You're older, but act like a child. Anyway, I'm giving our new house to my parents. If you resist, yeah, we'll get a divorce. What? Yes, I'm serious. I'm going to visit my parents' house today. You should stay alone and cool down your head. Reflect on your actions. And saying that, my husband went to his parents' house. I felt my love for my husband cool down in an instant. After all, he was a child born of that mother. Perhaps his self-centered nature was fundamentally the same. The next day, my husband returned home with a smug look on his face. Have you reflected yet? What am I supposed to reflect on? Are you sure of your words? Here are the divorce papers. I've already filled out my part. Didn't I tell you? I'm serious. If you're not repentant, we're getting a divorce. Think you can remarry at your age? Just stop being stubborn and listen to what I'm saying. Even my parents said they'd forgive you. I understand. Good girl. If you've learned your lesson, don't defy me again. I can't believe I didn't see my husband's true colors until now. Maybe he showed his true colors when I got a valuable new house. 
It seems like he's the type who becomes arrogant when he succeeds. I'm glad I found out before we started living together. I immediately filed the divorce papers and handed in at the city hall. We're no longer husband and wife, and I no longer have to let his family into my house. Luckily, to make me reflect, he had been staying at his parents' house for a few days, so I was able to move all my belongings to the new house first. The new house was just as I had imagined. Every corner of it was exciting. I bought new furniture and appliances and replaced them with the ones I had chosen, so I was filled with happiness just being in this space. Then, my ex-husband came to visit the house. When I looked at the video from the intercom, it seemed he had brought his parents and sister with him. Oh, I forgot to tell him that I had filed the divorce papers. When I answered the intercom, my ex-husband said irritably, Open up quickly. Sorry, I can't do that. Huh? What are you messing around for? Let us in. Damn, what do you mean moving in all by yourself without telling us? Sorry, I forgot to tell you. I'll forgive you. Just let us in now. That's why it's impossible. You? What I forgot to tell you was that I had filed for divorce. What? What do you mean? That means I've submitted the divorce papers you gave me. We're no longer husband and wife. That's why I can't let you all in this house. You can't be serious. Hey, Robert. What's this about a divorce? Didn't you two agree to live together? And even if you were divorced, the house is marital property, right? Why is the wife occupying it? That's right. Our son should have a right to live here, too. Robert, didn't you explain it properly? This house is entirely in my name as I paid for it in full. Uh, well, um... Through the video intercom, it was clear that my former in-laws were at a loss for words. Hey, Robert. You always said, come to our house. What's going on? Uh, well, that's... Anyway, that's the situation. Can you please leave now? Don't joke around. Why do we have to listen to you? If you continue to linger, I'll call the police. The... the police? Upon hearing the words, police, Robert's family were completely taken aback. Then, the father-in-law apologized to me, saying, I'm sorry, Maria, we'll leave, so please don't call the police. And they left in their car. As for the ex-husband and his family, it seems they met a miserable end. The father-in-law, having learned about how I was being bullied by his wife and daughter, divorced his wife in disbelief and cut ties with both his son and daughter. Incidentally, since they mistakenly thought they could move into my new home, they had already put up their house for sale. So the mother-in-law and sister-in-law, abandoned by the father-in-law, had no choice but to depend on Robert, who now supports them while being blamed by the two for It's Your Fault. I wish them well as they continue to shift blame on each other and lead a life of poverty. It serves them right. On the other hand, I'm living very comfortably in my new home and often invite my parents and friends over to have a good time. While I do want to experience love again, now that I have my own house, I intend to be more careful in choosing a partner so that I don't fall for the wrong person again.